required really a lot of skill to write such a biography about uh, such an outstanding artist. And uh, uh, Ms. Dalmer, thank you very much for doing that job. Uh, we all knew that you would uh, complete this mission perfectly. I think you've written a, a great biography of another artist, Amrita Gergil, who has been uh, active, not for that much time, but active also in Paris. and. Uh, uh, who's painted some of her best works, uh, uh, including some nudes and some uh, standstill in Paris. And uh, so uh, 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 I see some continuity uh, in that respect in your work. Uh, obviously, you're uh, being supported by uh, uh, the Raza Foundation that was launched by his artist, by the artist himself, and uh, who gave uh, 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 the leadership in the foundation to his friend and also fellow artist uh, Ashok Vashpai. It's good to have a poet of that scale to uh, lead uh, such an institution. So we're very grateful and thanks to you, thanks to your good work, there will be uh, to to prepare for the celebration for the uh, 100th anniversary uh, of. Uh, uh, the artists. We uh, we're going to have a magnificent exhibition uh, taking place in uh, uh, in Bobo, in Centre Centre Pompidou, uh, in June. And it's going. I hope that uh, many of you, in spite of the restrictions, will be able to uh, to visit it. Uh, it uh, it's been a long, long uh, work and collaboration between the teams of the museum, Catherine David and others in France, and. Uh, Mr. Vashpai and his team, and I think the, uh, the result is going to be outstanding and really what this uh, magnificent artist deserves. I'm not going to talk uh, more about that. I think uh, tonight we have uh, uh, many uh, better specialists of this work, uh, although I do uh, appreciate a lot his work. And now I will give the floor to uh, Ashok, I guess. Yes, please. Thank you. By Your Excellency, Yashodhara Ji, Sunit Tandon, and friends, it's a great occasion for the Raza Foundation and for the French Embassy, if I may say so to host the formal launch of Yashodhara Dalmia's biography of Raza. I remember about six years ago, on this, on 22nd February, Raza was here to receive from the French hands Légion d'Honneur. That was the last visit he made here. In fact, that was perhaps the last visit he made anywhere else. Co Commander, huh? yeah, which yeah. is the highest uh, grade you can reach for yes. a Legion of Honor. Uh, so this is for us a very major event. Uh, we requested uh, Yashodhara Ji, and it is so important that the biography has come when the 100th year of Raza has started. So it's a long life, 94 years of life, living, and about 75 years of painting. To convert this all into a narrative of 250 pages, which is what the biography length is, is a remarkable feat. There are two things happening. There's a life and there's art. And in Raza's case, they are intermixed. So what is happening in life, in terms of the glow of life, the warmth of life, the nobility of life, also getting manifested in his art and the similar feelings from his art getting manifested into his life. Imagine somebody born in a forest village in 
one of the ten hutments in central India, in very humble origins, to become the iconic artist that he finally became. So it's a very, uh, uh, very, very inspiring example also of what human creativity and human imagination and human persistence can attain and achieve. Uh, Ratha was very fond of and very respectful of the holy river Narmada. He in fact, never referred to Narmada as Narmada. He would always say Narmada Ji. And it is said about Narmada, it is Ubhay Tat Tirtha. It has holy places on both sides of the river. Now, Raza himself became a kind of a Ubhay Tat Tirth. He had beauty on one side, fear on the other. He had Mandla on one side, Paris on the other. He had India on one side, France on the other. He had modernity on one side, modernity on one side, and tradition on the other. Fury on one side and tranquility on the other. So he, ha he combined many of these uh, uh, qualities in himself. His Excellency has already announced that on 9th of June this year, Centre Pompidou would be showing, uh, 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 arranging a specially curated show with nearly 103 artworks. This is the largest ever show of Raza, uh, particularly his earlier works, which were kind of lost <coughs> attention, are being, um, being brought to notice. The biography is going to be published in India in many languages. The Hindi translation is more or less complete, and even the publisher is here in, among the audience. Uh, there are going to be a Bengali version, a Malayalam version, a Marathi version, and an Urdu version. Uh, there might be other versions as well, for all we know. There might be a Gujarati version as well. So, and this is the 100th year, so we have, we are organizing many things. For instance, we have a set of prints of Raza, which he himself authorized and signed. And we are taking them around India to show to art lovers, because taking his paintings is difficult and all that. And we have already started it. About seven cities have shown it. And we wish to cover more than 50 cities by the time we reach the centenary, which is the, the 22nd February 2022. We also have republished uh, a book by Dr. Geeti Sain, who is also fortunately here. He wrote a seminal work on Raza, which is referred to by uh, Yashodhara ji also in her book, uh, a revised second edition called Bindu. And there are several other publications being planned. They have children's book. Or Raza, on Raza, of his paintings, etc. I don't want to give you all the details, but it's going to be our as, our aspiration. And you, you know, you cannot uh, accuse us of lack of ambition. Uh, not me, nor Raza Foundation. Our ambition is that this should become the largest ever celebration of an Indian modern artist, which has been organized throughout the country. We are organizing at least seven multi-arts festivals uh, with um, a Raza exhibition, with a film, which is done by a French director on Raza, and uh, poetry reading, classical music, new choreographies inspired by Raza's art, and things of that kind. We are offering free a, a gallery to 12 chosen young artists to have their solo shows for the first time. We are also creating Raza Centenary Fellowships 
and scholarships in art institutions, especially some of the major institutions and institutions that he was a student of. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. This has been a wonderful occasion. I may now request Yashodhara Ji to say a few words about how she went about and what she did. Thank you, Ashok Ji, Excellency, distinguished guests, friends. I'm so glad that we could all meet here despite these difficult times and to have the event here because I cannot think of a more appropriate place to launch a biography of the artist. Not only do superb works by him hang in these uh, premises, uh, but I remember his presence here countless number of times. The last occasion being uh, the year 2015, when he was here to receive the Legion of Honor Award, and the look of pleasure on his face throughout the evening. So Raza left um, for Paris in 1950 on a scholarship, uh, which was for two years. And he spent over half a century there. He was a uh, He lived in Paris with his French wife, Jenny, and in Gorbio in South France, where he also had his studio and spent the summer and spent the summer months there he was french in many ways but he also retained his indian nationality he gained his knowledge and skill by being uh, by basing himself in france it gave him la son plastique a sense of the vital elements which constitute art but he also felt that Without the presence of divine forces, a work of art cannot take place. Devya shaktiyon ke bina chitra nahi bante. When the Bindu first emerged in his work in the early 80s, it was a latent force, a void, which was simmering with energy. It was the deep black center which is the source of immense creativity. And it was this immanent black center which charged his work with those radiant reds, yellows, and blues, which made his work special. It was as if there was a kinetic force behind these geometrical shapes, which seemed to arrange themselves of their own accord. Later, they were to find visual equivalents in words, which worked as parallel energies in the paintings. The words written in Devanagari's script were from poets and writers he had known and lo loved, and also resonated the medieval miniature traditions. The immensely delicate and rarefied concentric circles he began to make at the turn of the century, spoke of an ascension and a turn towards subtle energies, which while always present, began to manifest themselves. He found that musical notes could be comparable to these shapes and certainly their incandescent swirl seemed to suggest that. At the Festival de Avignon in 1995, Raza's paintings were shown, along with the recitation of poetry by Ashok Vajpayee and a Kathak dance performance. That the artist's works lent themselves to multiple creative forms is evident. In his masterly painting, Ma, made in 1981, 
with the rotating dark circle on the one side and tongues of flame on the other, we see his Im immense yearning for home. But also it speaks of the radiant inner force in his art, where lashing colors like flames spring from the deep unknown and create a dredge of memory and longing. Of the many carefully preserved letters by the artist himself, the most moving, perhaps, were those to his brothers and the entire, after the entire family moved to Karachi and Lahore, leaving him alone in India at the time of partition. When asked why he did not join them, he said he could not leave the land of Gandhi. In a suite of paintings made on Gandhi's beliefs in 2013, we see the immense, essential humanist re revealed. When Raza did return to Delhi in his late years, it was to once again root himself in the city which his grandfather had fled from during the rule of the last Mughal king. The wheel had come full circle, all the more so as Raza's own painterly beliefs were to unfold in the country of his birth and now enhance thought and creativity. To work on the manuscript has been a very rewarding experience for me. Uh, in the process of researching on Raza, I have gained knowledge of the painterly skill and acumen of the artist and the great humility and grace which lay at the core of his creativity. And it is this which enabled him to rise from very humble origins, the son of a forest ranger living in a small village in central India to become a legend in his lifetime. Thank you. I have read it already. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's very good. Come. <laughs> 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 Okay. <laughs> Short reading by Sunil Tandon. Okay. Oh, did you sit down? That's I'm fine. Thank you. I'm fine. got a copy of the book. It is available on your way back. Please pick up a copy. And there is also some other material which will give it to you when you need it after the session. Thank you. Good evening. I've been asked uh, by Ashokji and Yashodra to read uh, just three excerpts. I have edited them down, and I hope not to keep you from your refreshments for more than 10 minutes or so. First except is uh, about the early days in Mumbai and in Delhi. Since 1947, Raza had worked in a commercial design studio called El Raja Ram Art Studio on 44 Bomanji Lane at Fort. He would pay a sum of 20 rupees a month for rent there, a princely sum in those days. It was a small price for him to pay, however, for the liveliness and fraternity 
offered by his fellow artists of the Progressive Artists Group, whom he met practically every day then. Ram Kumar, who had made Raza's acquaintance during a show of his in Delhi and had instantly become friends with him, came to Bombay for a month during that period and would often meet Raza. He said, we met several times each day, sometimes at his Raja Ram studio, sometimes at some Irani tea shop. At times, when it would become very late, some of us friends would spread out mats on the floor of his studio and sleep there. In those days, Raza could not think of anything other than his art. He seemed to be intoxicated by that singular passion all the time. The sense of fraternity which existed between the artists can be gauged from the fact that there was frequent communication between them even when they had gone their separate ways. Writing from London to the other artists, Souza maintained his role as the leader. What are the future activities of our group? I think you could work on an idea I had. My mother has a small room in Hornby Road, which I think can be converted into a suitable art salon. Of course, if we were six together, we could conduct art classes there, which could bring us quite a sum of money in fees. But I am not sure of such vague propositions, and I have always failed in the activities I have undertaken. But you must keep the group going. And then there came some big brotherly advice. I would strongly advise you to paint now in oils. You are unhappy, you say, because you have no ideas. Well, I don't think that is true. There are immense possibilities in that medium than you can find in watercolors. And as you work, you will be surprised. You will get brilliant ideas. Don't buy a small piece of canvas. Start big. Do your first oils on large plywood boards or on large canvases. I'm sure in a short while you will be happy with yourself. This proved to be prescient for Raza, as it was indeed not long after that that he left for Paris and started making oil paintings, which immediately attracted attention. After he left for Paris, initially Raza visited India frequently. On one such occasion, when he participated in a group exhibition which inaugurated at Gallery 59, run by fellow artist Bal Chabra, Raza's work was priced at 1,000 rupees, a high price in those days, while Hussein's work was for only 500 rupees. Hussein reacted negatively at this and walked out of the gallery. He returned the next day with three paintings that resembled Raza's work, but were priced for five rupees each. This immediately thawed the ice, and when the group came together in the evening, Hussein composed a verse that ran, Aaj kya ho gaya? Paisa khota ho gaya, mamla ulta ho gaya. <laughs> Which translated means, look what has happened today. Money has become worthless. Everything has turned upside down. The second excerpt. In Srinagar, Raza met the well-known photographer, Henri Cartier-Bresson. And the meeting was catalytic for the young artist. On seeing his work, Bresson remarked, you are a talented painter, but your work needs one element, that is construction. Try to understand that a painting is built up. Try to see Cezanne. And if you can give structure to your work, it will be an entirely different thing. This encounter was not only the start of a lifelong relationship between Raza and Bresson, but it also initiated Raza's French odyssey, where he would search for meaning in his work. During Raza's time in Bombay, another exhibition made a lasting impact on him, and this was an exhibition of large prints of modern French painters presented by the French consulate in Bombay, exposing him to the works of masters like Picasso, Braque, and Matisse. The exhibition left him spellbound, and all the more determined to go to France and see the original works. Raza had read Lust for Life by Irving Stone on the life of Vincent van Gogh, which had made a great impression on him. The anguish, research, and ideas of this solitary artist who was a genius but whose work during his lifetime was not recognized except by a handful of people. He decided that in order to excel in his art, he needed to go to Paris, the mecca of the art world, and sharpen his aesthetic tools. Raza applied for a scholarship to the French government for further studies. Intense interaction followed with the French counselor, uh, Monsieur Journaud, where he was asked why he wanted to go there, and he replied, the French have mastered painting. I like French painting. He was asked to name the painting. Cézanne, Van Gogh, 
Gauguin, Picasso, Matisse, Chagall, and Braque. What do you think of the works of Picasso? Oh, every Picasso period is significant because Picasso is a genius. <laughs> Impressed by his answers, Raza was given a scholarship for two years instead of just one year. He was advised to learn French intensively and he studied hard for the next two years. The French consulate in Calcutta invited him to have a show, asking him to be present. Raza's financial situation, however, was not such that he could travel there. He wrote in a letter regarding my exhibition in Calcutta, I think early July 1950 would be a suitable time, but I am afraid I will not be able to come to Calcutta at all, partly due to financial difficulties and partly due to my appointment here. The consulate decided, therefore, to not have an exhibition of his works in Calcutta. Before leaving for Paris in September 1950, however, Raza had an exhibition at the Institute of Foreign Languages at Outram Road in Bombay. Monsieur Journeau, who had become a good friend of his, wrote apologizing that he was away and could not come for the exhibition, but he had recommended his friends to buy and asked Raza to reserve a painting for him. I would like to reserve for me whatever you choose as best in the exhibition, up to 100 rupees. A list of the exhibition indicates that a painting called Street was bought for him at 100 rupees. All the works in this exhibition were priced between 40 rupees and 300 rupees. Dr. Homi Baba bought the most expensive painting, Bombay, for 300 rupees. In these works could be seen elements of what would become a predominant trend in Raza's paintings in the years to come. The geometrical factor became visible as forms became increasingly simplified. In Moonlit Night, for example, the houses were arranged as shapes and create an almost abstract pattern with colors. They occupy no specific location or time. Was this also an expression of his state of mind for the next few years? The paucity of means at this juncture made all his friends and acquaintances contribute to Raza's departure for Paris. Professor Langhammer gave him his overcoat and his shoes. The Express Block Studios directors Jalil and Ashfaq Hussein paid his fare from Bombay to France. Boman Behram, a member of the prominent Parsi family, gave him guarantee in case he was broke abroad. And Raza, equipped and fortified, sailed for Paris in what was to be the longest journey of his life. Is that enough, or do you would want one more except? That's enough. One more, one more. One more? Please. <laughs> Thank you. Please. The last one is a little shorter, I think. Uh, here it is. So this is more about Raza's approach to painting. An inner call. Raza felt an inner voice in him that had to be answered, and at the same time, there was a call to carve a niche for himself in the world outside. Could he be considered a professional Indian, as some alleged? In other words, was he creating an aura of Indianness around himself in order to create a niche in the highly competitive art world of Paris at the time? Certainly, his brilliant colors, the notion of Indian spiritual thought, and the writing in Devanagari script marked him out in a manner in which he was considered modern and yet rooted. It has to be said then that Raza's affiliation to this particular brand of Indianness won him many friends and influenced people, even though his work was of the highest merit. If anything, his approach was equidistant from a sheer harking back to Indian spiritual thought and the plasticity of paint. Yet, in his creation of an aura around himself, he did make a special bid for an Indianness that marked him out. At the same time, Raza was deeply in touch with his core, beyond the particularities of any religion, and hence genuinely believed in divine inspiration. As he stated, and as uh, Yashoda has already pointed out in her uh, few words, divya shaktiyo ke bina chitra nahi bante. Which means that without divine forces, you cannot make paintings. Then again, the small red canvas is staring at me. But the gods are absent. You won't believe it, but I cannot work without the presence of divine forces. They are tangible and real. I have to pray before I start working. They are a link between the unknown and the known. They charge me to a state of unawareness. And it is only in that sum, stimweg, dreamlike state, that my best paintings come, without my ever fully knowing how and why. It is a state of grace, inexplicable. For Raza, 
the spirituality of his work linked with its plastic possibilities and with an international order which could be considered essentially modernist. Yet, while engaging with debates and discussions worldwide around the formation of modernism, he was an active participant in the creation of an emerging post-colonial India with its dreams and hopes for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Thank you very much. Congratulations. It's very well played. Are you are you are you doing some theater sometime?